So let's do an example. It turns out that intelligence quotients, or IQs, are distributed approximately normal with mean 100 and standard deviation 16. So let's see if we can calculate the 90th percentile. That'd be good to know, right? Then if you go and you take an IQ test and you score above the 90th percentile, then you know that you're doing pretty good, right? So I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to draw this IQ distribution way on down here to the right. It's got some pretty good spread to it. It's about 16, right? And then over here, way off to the left, I'll put a standard normal, okay? It's got standard deviation 1, so it's going to be a lot more peaked isn't it? And with a lot less spread to it because right? it has standard deviation 1. And so clean this up just a little bit. We'll put these both on the same number line there. And so this guy is centered here at 100 and its standard deviation is uh, 16. So here's 116 and here's 84 because that's 16 down from 100. This guy here is situated here at 0. Got a standard deviation 1, 2, okay and uh, you know negative two negative one and of course uh, this scale over here is different from this scale right because from here to here is 16 right from here to there is about 16 but of course if I take that ruler and put it over here well that's not 16 that's like four so uh, you'll have to just uh, pardon the scale difference there I just don't have room on the page and so you know what maybe we'll just uh, sort of uh, make a funny little mark here like, like that to sort of indicate that hey over here we've got this distribution and then wait down here we've got this uh, standard normal and you know there are a lot of numbers and stuff in between we've sort of grabbed a hold of this stuff with our hand and we've yanked it way over this way and so that's why the the number line has sort of uh, crimped up like this or something okay so here's the thing we want to find the 90th percentile for this IQ distribution okay this is how IQs behave over here okay according to this curve now let's say maybe I don't really know how to do that I do actually I know a couple of ways but I do know how to find the not the 90th percentile for a standard normal right this is the same thing as you know the, the the symbol for that for a standard normal is z sub point one o right at ten percent off to the right so i got ninety percent to the left i just do i and v norm of point nine o or if you like it doesn't matter either way you want to do it it's fine just as long as it's correct negative i and v norm of point one o i do that with my calculator i get negative i and v norm Point one zero. Oh. What does that spell? One point two eight one five. One point two eight one five. One point two eight one five. Okay, so it's about here, right? Right about there. Okay, and then so this much is about ten percent. Okay, and this much over here in the white part to the left is 90%. Now remember what happens when you standardize a variable, right? To get from the right over here to the left, what you do is you take this variable, right? Let x denote our IQ uh, random variable. If you're picking someone at random, x is the IQ. Um, and then over here you got the standard normal random variable. These guys are related by, you know, if I take x and I subtract its mean, which in this case is 100, and divide by the standard deviation, 16, I get that z random variable, right? And remember what you do when you standardize something. You find how many standard deviations it is up or down from the mean, right? How many standard deviations and in what direction it is from the mean. So what this number is, it says, hey, the 90th percentile for the IQ distribution should be at positive 1.2815 standard deviations from the mean, right? Or up 1.2815 standard deviations from the mean. If I'm over here, that's easy. I just go from 0 up that much 8, and then I'm at 1.2815. But if I want to go back this way, hey, how are these numbers related, right? If I do some multiplying right here, if I multiply through by 16 and add 100, I get that x is equal to 100, the mean, right, plus 16 times that z value, right? So if I stick this number in here for z, right? What are you doing? Remember this number, it says that the 90th percentile for the IQ distribution is 1.2815 standard deviations up from the mean. 1.2815 standard deviations, right? The standard deviation is 16, so I multiply 16 by 1.825. Up, here's the up symbol, plus, right? Up from the mean, right? So if you start at the mean over here and go up 1.28 
standard deviations, 1.28 sigmas. 1.28 sixteenths is what that is, right? So here I'm at 1 16 up from the mean, and I go up 0.2815 more, I'm at right here, right? Hey, look, this mark is to this graph as this mark is to this graph. You see that? It's like 1.2815 hash marks up from the mean in both pictures, okay? So I want to be right there, right there, okay? That's, and so this is 10%, and this much is 90%. What is this mark then? I can find it by just plugging 1.2815 in here for Z, right? What is it? And get my calculator and find that out. And so I, I start at 100, go up 1.2815 sigmas. Sigma, our standard deviation in this case, is 16, right? 120 and a half. There you go. So if your IQ is 120 and a half or better, then hey, you're doing pretty good, right? Your IQ is better than 90% of the other IQs. So 120.5 about, okay? Very good. Now, it's real good if you can understand all of that, but it turns out if you want to do it quick, maybe you saw this in your calculator, but if you just go to the distribution menu and you go down to INV norm, then guess what? If I want the area to the left, like, you know, the 90th, I want the 90th percentile. I don't just have to stick with the standard normal. I can put in my mean, which is 100, okay, and standard deviation of 16. How about that? Okay, now pa paste that and uh, press enter, and you get exactly the same thing. It's just not rounded as much because, you know, when we did it up here, we'd, we had rounded our uh, Z score up here, right, the 1.2815. So there you go. You can do it that way. But conceptually, this is really nice. If you can understand this, then you get what standardizing variables is all about and what z-scores are, are truly all about. They tell you the number of standard deviations the value is up or down from the mean, how far it is in terms of standard deviations. Let's do another example. Find the 84th percentile. Okay, 84th percentile. I just put in the same stuff as I had before, but I put in you know, the area to the left is going to be 84%, or 0.84, right? 0.84, like so. Okay, 115.9. Okay, so if you hit it 115.9 or 116, then you're still doing pretty well, right? Hey, you know what? Actually, let, let me do something else here. What's the 99th percentile? That's what I'd like to know. Like, how smart do you have to be to be, like, have an IQ that's higher than 99% of all the other IQs? Well, let's find out. Just change that number to 99%. And there you go, 137.22. Hey, if your IQ is like 135, 140, you're doing pretty good, right? There's a club for you folks. Mensa, not really sure what the requirements are to get in, but find the IQ such that only 5% of the population has higher IQs. Let's see, 5% has higher, so that means we're looking for the 95th percentile, right? you got to be able to read and understand English and stuff to do this. Okay, so there it goes. 126.3 is the 95th percentile. Okay, about what percentage will score at 100 or less? Uh, let's see. Gosh, so you know when you have kids and your son or daughter runs in and says, Hey, Mom, I scored 100 on my IQ test. You say, Oh, that's great, Johnny. Really, they scored right at the average. And that's okay. It's okay to be average. About what percent score 100 or less? It should be 50%, right? And I would do that, hey, I can't use the INV norm function for this, at least not directly. INV norm function tells you where to draw your knife through. It tells you where to make the mark, right? Which can be any number, positive or negative, more or less than one in, in magnitude, okay? It could be any number. If you're being asked for a probability or percentage, then you need normal CDF. What percentage score at 100 or less, okay? In this case, I need normal CDF. So. My lower endpoint, you know, something really, really way down yonder on the Chattahoochee, negative 10 to the 99th or something, 10 standard deviations down or something, you, you, you could do it like, like that, or, you know, you could do 10 standard deviations down would be uh, 100 minus 10 times 16 or something, you know, either way you'll get about the same answer. Upper, I want 100, right, I'm going to stop at 100, my mean is 100, standard deviation is 16. I know the answer better be 50%, right? And it is, right? 50% score at 100 or less. What about what percentage score at 140 or less? Okay, again, if you're being asked to find the percentage, then you need the normal CDF function. 140 or less. Uh, there we go. Uh, normal CDF, 
140 or less. So again, you know, something really uh, far off to the left, then we'll try negative 10 to the 99th this time, why not? Just something really far to the left in terms of standard deviations. Upper is 140, right? My mean is still 100, my standard deviation is 16. 99.34, or sorry, 99.379%. Okay, 99.379%. So if your IQ is 140 or better, you're doing pretty darn good. So just to recap briefly here, if you're dealing with a normal, and it doesn't have to be standard normal, it can be any normal, put a mu there, and then this is mu plus sigma, this is mu plus two sigmas, this is mu minus sigma, and this is mu minus two sigmas, right over there. If you're asked for the probability, then you remember probability is paint, right? You're being essentially asked for the, you know, the area in a region. It might look like that, or you might be asked for the area uh, between two points. You know, what's the chance that you know this normal random variable hits between two points? If you're asked for the probability, then you need this normal CDF function or uh, probability or percentage. Okay, and and in those cases, you'll be given these two endpoints or you know again if it's uh, you know if you're having to go all the way to the left or right then you know well it may be that you go all the way you know to the left or right and then down here you know you use something really far to the left and then you use this anyway if you're if you want to calculate a probability or a percentage then you need the normal CDF function on the other hand if you're being asked to calculate a little z number or a percentile then you're being asked to find a location here on the line you know where to draw your knife through essentially and then you must be given a probability you know you might be given this area off to the left here and so in this case this will you know if this area is uh, I don't know let's say it's smiley face then this will be smiley face times 100th percentile. For example, if, if smiley face is 10%, okay, then this is uh, uh, 0.10 times 100. This becomes the 10th percentile, right? 10th percentile. And for those problems, you need the INV norm function in your calculator. You use normal CDF to get probabilities. You use INV norm to get the percentiles and the Z numbers.